All right, Brent Forcio, topvelocity.net, doing a pitching analysis here of Anthony, going to pair him up with a Sal, uh, my one of my favorite Japanese pitchers. Okay, let's take Anthony here and do his leg lift. Let's take Sal here and do his leg lift. Okay. Notice into Anthony's lift, we, you know, we don't have much <clears throat> of linear move. We just have maybe a little crouch. Not really an issue. I mean, important, most important that we can see a significant weight shift inside this drive line, which we do. So, you know, it looks fine from the start. I, you know, I I would be aware of you know kind of pulling that foot too far in tensing up you know kind of flexing up this leg like this just because if we're gonna lead with the hip we want this to react back and if it's tense it tends to want to go with it so let's see what Anthony does as he starts to move <clears throat> forward we can see some hip movement same time we see the, the lift leg coming down and, and then at this point we, we see the, the hip starting to slow down and the lift leg really starting to get out. And that's kind of what I was talking about. It's If we keep that lift leg too tense, it's hard to put it in a more passive roll through the stride because it is tense. It's going to want to kind of lead the way or take control. So then it gets out too early. <clears throat> so if we watch Sal here, Here's my point. <clears throat> he's got a higher leg lift, but you can see he's more relaxed <clears throat> Excuse me, through the lift. And then as he starts to lead with that hip and start that linear move, I mean, he even goes into an extension, which is, is kind of even an exaggerating a hold position. So he's trying to keep it, you know, behind and, and kind of riding behind. <clears throat> and he even extends it out to kind of hold it there even longer from it wanting to fly out. Because look, when it flies out to the same position that Anthony's in, look how many more, look how much farther he's gone. So, you know, it's very, just very common high velocity pitchers. They they work really hard to keep the lift leg out of the equation as late as possible. Think about it. I mean, if you know, m m the majority of high velocity pitchers, when their lift leg knee breaks their front hip they've covered a lot more distances down the mountain. We can always tell that because their force vectors are a lot more linear and they have lower center of gravity. So we can see his hips to the ground. <clears throat> it's probably even too high. His hips to the ground, we see a low center of gravity linear force vector. If we do the same thing here with Anthony, we see a vertical force vector and a lot higher from the ground. Um, so them being able to keep the lift leg from getting out early allows them to cover more distances, lower their center of gravity before the lift leg gets out. Because we know once that lift leg gets out, it opens up, it puts down, and then uh, we're, we, if we haven't built power through that by that moment, then we have issues. And we know that high velocity pitchers generate more force production, more forces through this drive leg specifically just into the landing of the front foot. So if we can't generate those forces before we land, then right there we're starting on a really, really bad foot, you know, I guess no pun intended, because we we haven't generated the force to start the delivery. And, and ultimately that's what, what I call the throwing phase. 3x pitching calls the throwing phase. So that's, that's critical. If we don't do that, it's just not going to happen. So it letting the lift leg get out early, like I said, in the case of Anthony here, now we haven't gotten this linear, we haven't lowered center of gravity, so will it happen? And that becomes a question here, now will it happen? So, you know, he, he kind of holds it at that point, so that's like, you let it go early, and now, because it's out early, you're trying to hold it here, as you're bringing your lift leg down, not your lift leg, your drive leg down, but you're at the same time, you're also lifting your center of gravity. So most high velocity pitchers are bringing down their center of gravity. You're actually lifting it here as you're bringing your knee down, and then you continue to drive it down, and then it, it, it kind of pops over from there, and, and then you land, and 
you're in a short stride, a uh, very high center of gravity, and you haven't built much force through the drive leg. You've built some. That kind of late slamming of the force vector down created some. It wasn't a drive, um, and and ultimately it it does a lot of it has some negative effects, which is short strides. We know high velocity pitchers have longer strides, which create more trunk rotation, also more force production. Uh, you have a high center of gravity because of it. Um, we know faster movers generate lower center of gravity. Um, so you're shorter. You have a shorter distance to the plate, and uh, you're ultimately haven't built a lot of power, and you, and you haven't put your body in a position to to create a lot of hip rotation. So that's where it's, we're going to see it. The issue we're not going to see much hip rotation in the front foot. So you can see when the hips open, or not much, we can see slow hip rotation front foot. So when the hips open, we can see there was no separation from the hips to shoulders. And notice too that that really that late vertical lift like that threw your arms up really high. So you cocked up really high. Uh, and you know that this is not supporting hip to shoulder separation because you're even starting to tilt forward at this point. We still would like to see, you know, we, we there's a recent study that came out and write an article on talks about how high velocity pitchers keep the chin behind the belt buckle longer, and that's very much a key component of Rick's pitching. It's called chin tuck. So if you know that high lift, that high cock through your head forward, um, and you broke your head out in front of your hips too early, which was not going to support hip shoulder separation. That's why letting the chin go before the belt buckle, specifically at before front foot strike, is going to reduce hip shoulder separation because these these hips have to go through first before the shoulders, and that's ultimately what creates separation. If the shoulders lean forward before the hips, then you have the opposite effect. You have the shoulders, you have le less separation, shoulders going early. Okay, so, and, and that's all really the result of that, that, that vertical lift at the end because uh, you didn't get vertical or you didn't get linear early enough from the force vector and you tried to hold, so you came out of your lift leg so fast and then you tried to hold it here with a vertical force vector as you tried to slam it down then it caused this vertical lift at the end, shortened your stride put you into a high cock position with forward trunk tilt too early um, and it just didn't convert well, uh, and, and that's ultimately too. You know, studies show that if you fall to your front foot too early, then you throw off the whole uh, conversion of that that energy up the kinetic chain. So, a lot of things going wrong here, Anthony. And I think it's great you've had progress up to this point because it's just showing you as you get better at these movements, Anthony. You're, there's going to be so much velocity that is currently in you that you're not tapping into, and as you're doing that with your strength and conditioning program. You're just going to see massive jumps. Ideally, I, you know where you are. I'd really like you to come down to a three x velocity camp, just because I could get you. I could get you where you need to be so much faster, just because I could give you a lot of feedback through live video analysis and, and, and my own analysis. Well, I mean it is my analysis, but I have tools, video analysis tools to help you, and and I can just constantly p put you into these positions working with you and and you would see a quicker improvement through the program. Something you're not going to see it without coming down, you would just see a quicker improvement. Um, but like I said, it, it, we've got to get to the point to where we get to this linear position before the lift leg gets out. So then we can generate speeds through you know and peak those forces through triple extension into front foot strike. And as long as we can break them and keep those hips moving in front of that chin and keep that chin tuck then we can get that good hip shoulder separation we don't see notice his cock position look how high yours is look how low, low his is you have you're starting to tip forward he's still staying vertical and chin tucked he's got a good long stride because of that triple extension before front foot strike this is where we gotta get you the, the, you know the faster we get you to move like this Anthony the faster we get you into this kind of stride you know, that kind of distance off the rubber because of the force generated through the drive. You know, that little to no lead knee flexion. You know, the hips slamming open because of that, creating this kind of hip shoulder separation. This, uh, you know, this cock position here. 
and and good chin tuck, then then we've we've built the power, we've coiled you up, and then, then from there it's just letting it go. It's staying stable in the front leg, so we can push into some forward trunk tail, optimal external rotation, early internal rotation, and then you finish in that high velocity category. You see, you get late external rotation. Look at the difference here. This is early internal rotation. I mean, he starts to internally rotate there. So this is when he's fully externally rotated. This is when you're fully externally rotated. Big, big difference here. You know, knee behind heel, front leg extension, good forward trunk tilt external rotation. You know, you're, you got front leg extension. It's just too vertical, not much external rotation. And then look at the, I mean, uh, forward trunk tilt, and look at that external rotation. Elbow way out in front of your face, um, which is hard on your UCL, and, and ultimately, too late to be in a high velocity category. Okay, so it's it's really you getting better from that coming out of your lift, getting into that linear position, and then triple extending before you land. Now, right now you're going through the three expansion velocity program where we're in a linear position, down on a knee, full stride, and we're just working how to get that triple extension before we land, how to generate that explosive drive and force into front foot and converted hip shoulder separation. You do need to develop that first and that's why you're doing that through the three expansion loss program. And then once you master that, then it'll be more it'd be easier for you to come out of lift to load, lower that center of gravity and get down to that linear force vector. But even if you can't even do that movement, at least you know what to do from here. Because, you know, it's putting the cart before the horse if we try to get just work on lift to load so if we're if we're getting good at getting down to here but then from here we don't know what to do we just basically collapse into it it doesn't work that way so we gotta learn this move here which is the bread and butter triple extension before front foot strike into hip shoulder separation and then you can learn um, at, you know the icing on the cake which is going lift to load right here boom lift to load and that comes up in the preseason program but you know, if, if keep working at it, keep going at what you're doing. If, if you can come to the camp, that'd be awesome. It'd just be great for you to, uh, you know, get going and, and make these improvements a lot quicker. Um, but if not, like I said, I can work with you for what you have here and, and uh, just keep going at it, and you're going to see a lot of big improvements from it. So if you have any questions, let me know.